Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin and today I'm just going to have a bit more of a uh, relaxed video and I'm just going to talk to you about a few tech items that I think are really worthy upgrades for people out there that are maybe not so sure if they're you know really that worth it or not. Uh, sorry videos haven't been coming out uh, as frequently lately, I've just had a bit of a break, um, just been doing some other things so uh, that that's why because I've been putting out videos pretty uh, consistently for a while now. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about, um, I'm not going to focus too much on hardware because it would just, this video would go on forever, there's, there's so many things uh, to cover. But, but I'm going to cover one piece of hardware that was often overlooked, and it was, uh, I'll admit, I overlooked it originally as well. And that's uh, SSDs. So if you don't know what an SSD is, it's a solid state drive. Um, it's basically, uh, it, it's, it's, this flash, it's a flash storage hard drive, basically. So uh, if you're just running an HDD, um, it... I, I don't want to make it too complicated for you guys. So basically, uh, an SSD is just a very, very fast hard drive, basically. Um, they're usually quite a bit more expensive, especially per, you know, the amount of size you get compared to uh, a conventional hard drive. Um, but, but the performance is excellent, and it really livens up a lot of PCs. So there's a lot of them out there. Now, I'm also going to tell you guys what I recommend when it comes to them as well. Um, there's a lot of SSDs out there, so if you were thinking about getting one and you weren't really sure where to start, uh, personally, I believe the two best brands to stick with when it comes to SSDs, uh, Intel, um, I think the 530 series is excellent, and of course, uh, if you want to go even more crazy, then the 730 series is, uh, really, really good, and the other one is Samsung. Um, yeah, just, just stick with those two, the, the Pro series from Samsung is very good. Uh, I, why I say go with those ones, uh, SSDs, they can be quite slow ones from certain companies, um, and also unreliable ones, and you don't want to lose a lot of, uh, what you have on it, you know, if you didn't back it up, or, or whatever the case may be, just, just go, uh, right from the first time, and so, uh, the, those would be the two brands I stick with when getting an SSD. As far as sizes go, mm, now this one's a bit more dependent. Um, depending on the, what what uh, uh, SSD you go for, you know what brand, what model, blah blah blah. Um, they'll usually only go down to a minimum size. Um, usually it can be about 120 gigabyte these days. Um, some still go down to say like 60, but uh, yeah. So, but let's just treat treat it like the minimums 120. Because uh, honestly, in my personal opinion, I think I think 120s uh, should be about the minimum you go for. 120 will allow your OS. Um, and a few games in there as well, and a few other things. Remember, your OS will start to kind of uh, take up space over time as you know, and you, you install different things and that. And uh, so, so I think 120 is a good amount. Um, if you want a, that's kind of like the good minimum amount. Um, a really decent size is something like a 240 will do very well, um, and that's what a lot, what I see a lot of people going for nowadays. So, so that's a good size. So SSD is a really good upgrade. They just they're so much faster, so, uh, you know, boot on times are much quicker. Uh, the, the operating system themselves, and when you play games, stuff like that, it just feels a lot more snappy, a lot quicker, and uh, they're an excellent upgrade if you haven't got one already. Um, and, obviously, you just run a normal HDD as your mass storage, um, because it's much more efficient, you know, money-wise, do it that way. Get yourself a 1TB, 2TB, 3TB uh, HDD as your second drive, and which uh, you put all your mass storage on. Now the next one we're going to talk about is mechanical keyboards. So if you don't have a mechanical keyboard, um, it's it, this one's quite hard to explain to you, as is with all peripherals. Um, but once you go to a mechanical keyboard, depending on which key switches you try and which ones you like personally, everyone likes different ones. Uh, once you try to go back to a traditional membrane keyboard, you just cannot do it. It is just, yeah, it's just very very difficult. So the main reason for this that I can try to explain basically is probably the feedback from a mechanical keyboard. So my favorite switch is blues. Um, they're the clicky ones, make a lot of noise. Uh, you can also, uh, I also really like browns as well, which are very similar to blues, uh, just a bit quieter, there's a few different changes. Um, but yeah, those, those are my main two that I like. And the main thing is the feedback. So it's not just for gaming, although that does uh, help a lot. 
because you can really feel that you hit the keys and if you've got blues they make a noise so you know that you hit it as well you heard the noise you heard the key activate um, but it's also typing as well so even if you're not a gamer um, uni student stuff like that I mean this helped me through uni uh, you can type quite a bit faster for claims of you know 10% faster 20% faster typing speeds uh, from what you were before just from upgrading to a mechanical keyboard so that's really good upgrade as well uh, when it comes to say brands and different things um, the new razors with their new uh, key switches I forget what they're called uh, I personally don't think they're very good at all uh, you might be like well you I see that you have a razor um, keyboard so so I get black widow but mine's the old one this is when they're still a cherry mix so when it comes to mechanical keyboards make sure they have um, the properly made German cherry MX keys um, of that I'd say good ones to go for that I've uh, previously re reviewed uh, ducky keyboards if you if you can get them ducky keyboards are excellent uh, they're an excellent Taiwanese keyboard um, yeah they're, they're usually very good value for money as well uh, ducky if you can um, Corsair makes a quite a few good ones and, and they got good key switches in them so I like Corsair as well um, but the main thing is mainly the key switch itself so you, you want to make sure it's uh, the proper cherry makes the genuine ones and um, find out which key you like the most. The popular ones you'll probably hear are obviously blues, browns, blacks and reds. Um, yeah, with reds I'd say being the least popular and uh, from my experience blues and browns being the most. Uh, so just go out, try them, usually computer your hardware stores and stuff like that, computer hardware stores, um, they might have a bunch of them laid out uh, at stores like Playtech if you're in New Zealand um, they have a keyboard there where we, we um, switched out uh, different Cherry MX for, uh, keys for different parts of the keyboard so you know the left hand part is kind of uh, I think it's like reds and then the middle is like a mix of you know uh, like blues on one side browns on the others and then it's just a whole intermix so you can use the keyboard and you can really feel the different uh, Cherry MX keys and that gives you a good idea of what kind of key that you particularly like so, uh, uh, mechanical keyboard, also an excellent upgrade for people looking uh, to do it. And if you don't have one already, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're writing lots of documents and things like that. Once you go to mechanical keyboard, you just will never go back. Now, the last one we're going to talk about, because I've tried to limit this to about three, um, so we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be going off forever. And uh, this one is going to come with kind of like a disclaimer. So... Is gaming getting a gaming mouse? However, in my personal opinion, um, I'd put the need uh, out of these three as you know. I, I'd much rather a mechanical keyboard and just a normal, you know, average mouse uh, rather than a mean gaming mouse and going back to a membrane keyboard. I, I just I, I'd rather that uh, that way round. So, so the the gaming mouse is more of something that's um, more of a, a really good luxury rather than a necessity. Although, you know, a lot of people might complain with that and say, well, once you go game mouse, do you, have you tried going back? Yes, I have, and I've tried a whole bunch of them. So I'm telling you, yeah, once you do go to it, you won't go back. But as I don't find it as much of a necessity yet as a mechanical keyboard. Uh, and saying that, um, things to look for in a game mouse, obviously, as, you know, there's the aesthetic side of it, so do you like the look of it? Uh, ergonomics is a big one, because you're going to be using this a lot. You want to be going into, again, a computer store, something like that. They usually have a lot of uh, models laid out um, from different manufacturers, or sometimes whole, uh, all the different models from the same manufacturer. You can just try it out. Just, um, you know, see which one fits your hand. We all have different hand sizes um, and grip, uh, different grips for the mouse. So try them out, see which one you like, and uh, um, the other way to do it is to uh, think about the things you require in a gaming mouse. So what type of game do you usually play? If it's FPS, you'll be wanting to look for more an FPS oriented mouse. Uh, if you play MMOs, then you want to look for a more MMO oriented mouse, which would have more programmable buttons on it. Things like that are uh, really good to look for as well, and the different sensors they have, um, and all that. Just Just do your homework first kind of get an idea of what what ones uh, would suit you the best, then go into the store and try them all out, see which one fits your hand the best of those models that you think will suit your gaming needs the best, and then pick that one. Um, as a general recommendation, which ones I like, well, if you've been subscribed to me for a while, 
Uh, I honestly think the best value for money gaming mouse, um, this is in general, uh, is the uh, Logitech G502 Proteus Core. The sensor in it is excellent. The customizability is excellent. The only downside is the mouse scroll wheel is a bit funny. Um, but the buttons, everything is fantastic. So I'd say that the G502 is possibly the best value for money. And overall, from all the ones I've tested, I'd probably say the uh, Rat TE is probably the best gaming mouse I've tested. But it does come in at quite a... It's about double the price of the G502. So the G502 is very good. A very good value for money and an awesome gaming mouse if you're looking for it. But that's just a general opinion. Obviously, if you're like left-handed or something like that, you're going to have to... Look at different things. We have seen a rise in the amount of ambidextrous gaming mice coming out lately, so that's good. Um, but yeah, you, you want to find something that's going to suit your needs the best. As always, that's just my personal opinion, and uh, the three I listed are not probably the most three important or anything like that. It's, these are just the first ones I kind of thought of to do, and uh, main ones that really I think are quite uh, good for people to upgrade to, and once they have, they, they usually thank me and say how how, uh, you know, their eyes are open now and how much better it is that they've gone to, say, a mechanical keyboard from a memory one or something like that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have a new review coming up for you very soon. We're going to try something new, something I haven't done before. We're going to be doing a tablet review. The Samsung. I won't tell you which one, although some of you could probably guess, maybe, if you're very onto it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be doing a tablet review next. I'm also going to be trying maybe in the future to get into uh, phone reviews and stuff like that as well. Uh, something I really want to try to take this uh, channel in that direction also. Um, so I'm doing a lot of homework, watching a lot of other channels, how they do tablet and phone reviews and stuff like that, what kind of key aspects they hit and what people really want to see in regards to tablet and uh, phone reviews. Um, and so I can try do those reviews very thoroughly in my usual in-depth way and um, try hit all the keynotes people like to see when you review um, things like that. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.